Well, what, what is happening at the moment is that men are beginning to empower themselves by communicating with each other and discussing issues that concern them as men, as opposed to issues that concern them in other spheres of their, of, of their lives. Men in the past have tended to discuss issues which do not relate to themselves uh, in, in terms of themselves as men. They will talk about the economy, they'll talk about the war on drugs, the war in Iraq, they'll talk about everything under the sun except themselves. But what is happening, thanks to the internet and to the growth of the men's movement, is that for the first time, probably in history, and certainly in recent history, men are actually talking about their own needs. What we are accustomed to in the Western world is women looking at issues, at all issues which affect them as women rather than as, uh, as individuals or as people. Men have failed to do this. And so, for example, if you look at the newspapers, if you look at the, um, the way matters are discussed, you will very often find women, author, women journalists, women authors, <coughs> writing about subjects, about issues that concern them as women. You never hear, uh, you never see men writing about those issues in the same way. Uh, but that's now beginning to change. The second reason is that um, so many men have now become alienated from their own societies for one reason or another, um, often because, well, of, perhaps they've lost access to their children, perhaps they've been sent to prison for some trivial offence like smoking cannabis, um, perhaps they feel alienated because they've been discriminated against in the workplace where women have been promoted ahead of them simply on the basis of their gender. Um, they've been demonized for 30 years uh, and it's still the case that, um, for example, uh, when, women, uh, when men are hurt in any way, uh, th their suffering isn't taken seriously. And so we will still laugh at bobbit jokes, which I think uh, shows us just how hated at a very deep level uh, are men. And, um, there's no doubt in my mind that feminism has had a great deal to do with it. And when men wake up to how they have been demonized by the feminist movement and they understand how this has been achieved, um, they will fight back. And that's what's happening now. Do you think that something in the nature of men makes it more difficult for us to work together, for men to work together to achieve, not, not in terms of general teamwork, but in terms of forming societies like mankind or contributing to this sort of effort, do yeah, you think okay. that something about men makes it more difficult for that to happen than with women and their charities, who seem to be so numerous? Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, it, it, I find it quite strange with men. If you, if you get them into what I call a military situation where they've got to take orders and all that, I mean, they're unbeatable because they, they do work as a well, like band of brothers, you know what I mean? They'll all look after each other's back and, and they will fight as a good team. But it would seem that when it's fighting for women's rights, um, as when I was down the visitor centre, when I, I ran that for the first year, and I had this couple came in and I don't know, she was giving him a bit of a nagging and this bloke turned around and he says, there's no doubt about it, he said, uh, you have a go at a bloke, he said, he's on his own. He said, you have a go at a woman, he said, and you, she's got the world behind her. Why do you think men don't see themselves, or haven't up until recently, seen themselves as men? They'll see themselves as Muslims or as a part of a religious group or a colour or a race, but never as men themselves. Because they're not allowed to talk about it. It's, it they are in private, but as you probably, I mean, men in private rarely talk about their emotional states, uh, you know, the monosyllabic, when they talk about their intimate relationships. But once again, men have not been allowed to air their views, their complaints, their worries in the mainstream media for a long time. And so they haven't developed a consciousness of themselves as men. You know, from, um, women uh, see the way, uh, look at the world in a, look at the world in a completely different way than do men. Men externalize the world, if you like. They don't see, they almost don't see themselves as a part of it. They see the world in terms of statistics, numbers. They see the world in terms of, of different groupings, blacks, whites, but they don't see themselves as men. They're conscious, they don't have a consciousness of themselves as men. You can see this, for example, in, in um, well, there are many examples, but one that comes to mind is the fact that they don't look after their health very well. Men tend not to go to the doctors as often as do women because men are not thinking of themselves. It's something that they're unaccustomed to thinking about. Men have been brought up. And certainly when I was a man, brought up to think of just about everything 
accept themselves. And of course, you need men to think uh, in this way if you're going to send them out to do hard, onerous jobs, if you're going to send them out to war. Uh, and a man who goes out to war values, uh, values his country more than his life. And uh, that's how men have been brought up. Uh, and, and women also uh, do, um, do very well in making men uh, forget that they are also human beings. Fathers' movements right the way across the world have never managed to establish themselves as a coherent, powerful source of opposition. Unlike the feminist movement, women are far better than men in networking and organizing and working with each other, particularly over emotional issues. Men are afraid in the dark ages when it comes to this. So even if they know that a woman is not really quite right in what she's saying, they'll, they'll back her because she's a woman we, and a sisterhood's got to stick together. Do you think that there were things that men could have done back then? or Yes, know, Families Need done? Fathers started almost immediately after I opened. And in fact, it was because of Families Need Fathers and men coming to me who were brutalised that I opened a house for men in North London. I think this is very relevant to what we're talking about because I got the GLC in those days to give me a lovely big house in North London uh, to make provision for men coming in with their children. And I couldn't get any funding from anyone. And the tragedy was that the men, the wealthy men who were willing to put their hands in their pockets to help me with my mothers and children and my refuge in Chiswick, completely ignored and would not cooperate with anything to do with men. Men will not help other men. Do you have any idea why that is? Is there any easy answer? I, th I think it's built into the male psyche. Somehow uh, what is seen or perceived as a weak man in quotes who can't take care of himself or take care of his relationship uh, is, is, a, is a disgrace and it's almost like it might be catching. When you're dealing with women's violence, whether it be a mob violent rule, you know, like this, the, these women, there is an innate part of men that is extremely frightened of women and they don't deal with them, they run away. Often I've said to a man, the reason that you're so angry with your partner is because you're so dependent on her. And this is often why I think men don't take responsibility for anything to do with this movement. They don't get together, they don't negotiate with, with lawyers, they don't en masse say, we're not putting up with this. Do you see that changing um, at all, or do you think it's just a constant? I think, I think men have to learn to change. I think women are infinitely malleable and changeable. Maybe it's a biological imperative in women because they create the conditions to have their children safely and to bring them up. But there seems to be, if you put, an example is, when I opened the refuge, it was a two up, two down outside lavatory and within a matter of months, there were 56 mothers and children in that tiny place. And to watch them organize it, the feeding, the cooking, the washing, the cleaning, they did it all. I just used to come in and be there. The night I opened the men's house, which was actually a much nicer house in North London, and took in the first men, what the men did, which was so dispiriting, because I was expecting them to do what the women did. They just merely moved themselves into different rooms, shut the doors and refused to come out. They didn't cooperate with each other, they didn't help each other. The only thing they were willing to do was to pick up the phone if it rang so they could give advice. When it comes to men's groups, uh, unless we were able to form them into a, like a new model army, um, I think it, it, it's very difficult because they, uh, a lot of them uh, seem to want to do their own thing and work as individuals rather than work as a team. And until men start to work as a team, we're not going to we're not going to get anywhere. We, we've got to work as teams. First of all, we've got to start to talk to men about taking responsibility for the future of their, of their lives in relationships. It can get down to some very simple things with men. I mean, how many men in a relationship take any responsibility for buying Christmas cards? None. They let their wives do it, or their partners do it. Buying presents, they let their wives and their partners do it. Any responsibility for relationships. I remember giving an impassioned speech somewhere in the world and I was talking about what I call women as terrorists because women in relationships tend to behave like terrorists. A lot of the violence is subterranean. And I walked out afterwards and I'd said impassionately to the men who were there, why is it that you let this happen? I remember this man coming up to me and he said, you never understand the nookie principle. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, if I go home and even discuss with my wife that men could be victims. 
I don't get any sex for weeks. There's a lot of to, to do with that. And it's the intimidation of men. I mean, what is it about men who are supposed to be so much more violent than women that when it comes to revolu revolutions, in terms of protecting themselves and their children, they're wimps.